Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Samsung's 860 Evo and Crucial's MX500 review. Should you buy these? Are they improvements over the previous generation drives? How good are they really? What are the differences? And are they the only drives you should consider today? In this video, I'm gonna talk about these, how they relate to the previous ones, other drives on the market, and then give a specific recommendation on who should considering buying which drive. First, I want to be very clear. These drives are evolutionary in nature, not revolutionary in nature. If you have a Samsung 850 Evo, the 860 Evo is a small bump up in performance. It's a small bump up in features. It is not a revolution. If you have an 850, unless you just need more size, there's no reason to look at this. It's just a small iteration on it. Same thing with the Crucial MX500. If you have an MX300, again, unless you just want more space, it is an evolution rather than a revolution. The real purpose for these, besides being put into new installations or new system builds or being added as additional drives, would be upgrades over three to five year old SSDs that are perhaps off brand. Not even necessarily these companies, but if you have some small no name 120 gig or gasp even smaller 60 gig SSD from four plus years ago, these definitely would be an improvement. But even compared to the MX100 and the Samsung 840 Evo, which came out many years ago, these are not dramatically faster. They do, however, have longer endurance, some better features, and a longer warranty, five years each, which is really, really nice. Linked down in the video description below will be both of these drives in all their sizes to Amazon and Newegg. Please check them out and compare prices because prices on SSDs fluctuate and vary. And this specifically leads into my buying advice. For 95% of everybody watching this video, my advice is really simple. When choosing between these two drives, buy the drive in the size that you're looking for that costs the least. On the day I filmed this video, and prices will change, the Crucial MX500 was $135 for the 500 gigabyte size. The Samsung 860 Evo was $170. At those prices, there is no contest. You buy the MX500 all day long. Are there any reasons why the 860 Evo was better? Yes, and we'll get to those but for the vast majority of you, buy whichever one costs the least. Now, if those prices are reversed, by all means, then buy the 860 Evo, that's an easy decision. But with that large of a price difference, by all means, buy the cheaper drive. Now, you might be able to find the previous generation drives on sale. On the day I filmed this video, the 500 gig Samsung 850 Evo was $20 less than the 860 Evo. Would I save $20 and buy an 850 Evo? Absolutely. If I wanted a Samsung drive, but didn't want to spend too much money, you will not notice a performance difference in real world use between these drives. There's a little bit of one and benchmarks will show it, but in the real world, no, not really. It is very, very minor. So essentially my advice comes down to buy whichever one costs the least. The same thing applies to the MX300 versus 500. If you find these on on sale, discount, clearance, etc., and they are $20 or $30 less for the same size, an MX300 is still a great choice and I would absolutely take one at the right price. Now, I will get to benchmarks in just a second. Not to worry, there are benchmarks here. However, let me talk about the feature and other differences behind these drives before we get to the actual numbers. First of all, I mentioned already these drives both have five-year warranties. That is very, very nice. They have different total terabyte written drive endurance ratings. The 860 Evo does have a higher rating and it's different for each drive size than the MX500 is, but the reality is they are both so high, the drive's gonna become obsolete before you hit it. I have several drives with over 100 terabytes written, but they're like four and five years old and they've been heavily daily active used as boot drives with Windows updates, games and programs installed on them. I have not seen drives in normal use, even in business day-to-day, -day, you know, eight hour a day, five day a week use, actually come even close to 50% of their drive life in four to five years of service. I understand it's a common concern of people buying an SSD. Wait a minute, there's a limited amount of rights on these drives. What happens if I wear them out? You're not going to unless you deliberately try to destroy the drive. In server environments, in certain database and multi-user workloads, it is possible to run out consumer level drives. But the reality is 99.9% .9 of anybody who might be watching my video, that is not remotely a concern. The drive will be completely obsolete and it will be 10 plus years before you even think of coming close to their drive endurance rating. There is one important difference between these drives where I would actually consider paying the higher price of the Samsung versus the Crucial, drive cloning. 
If you have a hard drive that you wish to clone Windows to the SSD so you don't have to reinstall Windows and reinstall your programs, or even an older serial ATA drive, maybe you have a 120 gig SSD and you'd like a 500 gigabyte or one terabyte drive, Samsung makes the best drive cloning software in the business. Now it is true that the Acronis True Image HD software that Crucial provides does the job in most cases on most machines. I have run into situations in the past, I've shown that on my channel, where it runs into problems in certain pre-builds and certain situations where it won't clone properly. Samsung software works first time every time. I personally would pay the extra to buy a Samsung drive if I'm cloning from one machine to another, one drive to another. It's just easier to use. It does the job very, very well. So if drive cloning is important to you, consider buying the Samsung even at a higher price simply for peace of mind and ease of use for the cloning software. I know you only use it once, but it really is that much better than the stuff that comes with, frankly, not only Crucial, but everybody else on the market. Now it's time for some benchmarks. Before I put the benchmarks up here, I wanna talk about how benchmark works and how these drives work in general because I wanna explain these results before I show them to you. These are TLC drives, tri-level cell. They actually store three bits per NAN cell on the drive. They are not actually as fast as all the benchmark numbers and even the advertisements claim because of the way the memory works. The write speed is actually slower than the advertise. So how is it fast? caching, specifically SLC or single level cell caching. Most of these drives use about 5% of their space to do really fast writes and then internally move the data around in the background when you're not using them. The 500 gig 860 Evo has a 22 gigabyte SLC cache built into it. You can write 22 gigabytes at absolute max speed and it will be very, very quick. But if you try to write all 500 gigs, if you never give the drive a break or a rest at all, it will start slowing down and have trouble. And the reason is the controller has to start moving data from the SLC cache to the TLC or just directly start writing to the TLC, which is much slower. Now that's true of the MX500, that's true of the older drives. You need an MLC drive, which costs more. For example, the 860 Pro is an MLC drive and it will allow full drive writes at full speed. But take a look at the prices of those. Those are expensive. Normal consumers and in fact, business users generally don't need MLC drives. That's a very special use case, so they're fine. But do keep in mind that there's a lot going on in the background that allows these drives to appear faster than the underlying NAN cells actually are, which again is true for all the current TLC drives on the market. Now this brings up another important point with benchmarks. You're not directly writing to the actual core memory within the drive. You're writing to the controller, which is a computer on a chip. All of these drives are actually full computers. They have a DDR RAM built in. They've got a microprocessor controller. They've got buffers. They've got the cache. So when Windows sends a write command to it and says, here, write all this data, the controller goes, okay, it takes it, puts it in a cache, writes it to the SLC, and then orders it across the NAND cells as it wants, not as Windows wants. The actual drive map that the drive presents to Windows is a fantasy and does not reflect the actual place on the drive that the data is written. This is different than hard drives. Hard drives actually start and run through a mechanical spiral and their drive map actually aligns to the drive itself. SSDs don't do that. And having said all of that, let me show you the first results here because we're gonna talk about benchmarks and why they are so maybe not the most important thing when it comes to these. They are important, but once you get within a certain margin of error, not so much. On the top there, you're looking at the Samsung 860 Evo, and on the bottom, you're looking at the Crucial MX500. Easy decision, the 860 Evo is clearly faster. We have a winner, right? Well, maybe not so fast. Please note that these are five repetitions. If you look at the details there, it's one gigabyte of data being written, which easily fits in the SLC cache of these, and then it's repeated five times. But what happens if you run the five time repeat again? Let me show you another set of results over here. All of a sudden, the 860 Evo is not quite so fast. Here's what's interesting. Do it again and again and again, and you keep getting different results. And part of the reason for that is you're not directly writing to the drives, you're writing to the, to the host controller, the actual processor. Some of these actually have triple core processors on board with uh, actual DRAM buffers and then write to the S. There's a lot of uh, layers in between your computer and actually writing to the TLC NAND. So the speed of the NAND is almost completely transparent to your machine. Let me show you two more sets. Let me get rid of those. I'm gonna show you two more sets of results. 
I spent several hours running and rerunning these tests. I then increased the amount of write from 1 gigabyte to 32 gigabytes, which should completely saturate the drives. Yes, they do slow down a bit. Let me give you the short version. They trade blows and trade places depending upon how you run the tests, what uh, depth you run, whether it's sequential or random. And frankly, all of these tests were run back to back on my test bench back there. These were not, did not have windows installed on them. They were completely clean, brand new real retail drives. That is a clean install of Windows 10 back there. There's nothing on it. In fact, just a week before I started testing these drives, I reinstalled Windows 10 from scratch. Couldn't be any cleaner if I tried. Here's what's more interesting. Copy over a Steam folder with GTA 5 on it and launch GTA 5 on both drives. Forget timings and benchmarks because, of course, level loads and other things and playing the game is going to be different. But in a blind test, moving the icons around and choosing auto arrange, can you tell the difference between these two drives launching Grand Theft Auto 5, uh, loading a save game, launching into the level, and driving around? No, not at all. If there's a difference, it's beneath the level of human perception. And I work with a lot of SSDs. I mean, I've got tons and tons of SSDs. I've got a shelf of SSDs over there. I've done many SSD re reviews in the past. So I've used a lot of different drives on the market. Some drives I can tell the difference on. These I can't. They are perceptibly the same in terms of performance. As far as I'm concerned, they're interchangeable. This is why at the beginning of the video, I gave the advice, buy the drive that costs the least. Don't worry about all the other particulars and benchmark charts you might see because you'll never notice those in the real world. In the real world, what matters is how much money you spend to buy them. One final point that I'd like to make absolutely clear, you can buy these drives in both M.2 and 2.5 inch drives. They are the exact same thing and will provide the exact same performance. I understand there's a lot of confusion. Some people think that M.2s are all NVMEs and thus must be faster. No, they can be NVMEs, but many of them are SATA drives. 860 EVOs in this M.2 format are exactly the same performance interface and everything as the two and a half inch version. What you're thinking of for NVMe is the 960 EVO, which is notably more expensive than these, but up to five times faster. If you truly want performance, if you truly want high speeds, then you want a 960 EVO, not an 860 EVO. Now the crucial MX500 is on the day I filmed this only available in the two and a half inch size, but very soon they will be coming out with an M.2 version of that as well. And again, it will be exactly the same performance as the two and a half inch version. The only reason to buy an M.2 drive is simplicity of installation. There's no power cable, there's no data cable, it plugs directly into your motherboard, but it does in fact work the same as a two and a half inch serial ATA drive. On most consumer level motherboards, installing an M.2 SATA drive actually disables one or more of your serial ATA ports, which ones depend upon the board that you're installing. On the test system back there, port number one was disabled when I installed this, but it's gonna be different on each board. So do be aware that that often happens. That does not necessarily happen with the 960 because it's a PCI Express drive and the 960 runs directly to the CPU or through the chipset and doesn't use a serial ATA controller. Final thought. Other drives I've previously reviewed. This is a SanDisk Ultra 2 and this is an ADATA SU800. I've covered them previously. My 2017 uh, SATA drive review covered these. Would I still buy them? Yes, if the price was competitive. If the price of these drives is the same as these, honestly, I would take these drives for the five-year warranty if nothing else. However, the reality is while these may not be quite as fast as these drives, if you can find them at a discount, 10, 20, $30 less than these, and maybe those aren't available, then they're still worth buying. They're very quick, they're very fast, and for most uses, you'll never notice the difference. But if all else is equal and the price is the same, then the two drives in front of me are the ones to buy. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section. Please check the links in the video description. The link to my full list of storage reviews, the link to Amazon and Newegg for these drives will be down there. Please use those links. They are affiliate links. They do support the channel. Neither of these drives were sent to me by either Crucial or Samsung. I bought these drives off of Amazon and frankly, they are really, really good drives. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.